What's up, party people? How are we doing? This is Billy from BillyGoesHiking.com, and today I'm going to show you um, my poncho tarp. I'm going to show you three ways that I like to pitch it. Um, so let's start off by saying what this video is not. This video is not intended to be a gear review on the poncho tarp or any of the other pieces of gear that I'm going to be using today. Um, frankly, I haven't had enough time with the poncho tarp to really give a thorough gear review. Um, second, this is not meant to be a super technical video that's showing you all of the knotting systems and really go in depth on the individual pieces of gear that comprise my shelter. Um, it also isn't a holistic view of my sleep system. So with this poncho tarp, I'll also have a foam pad, inflatable pad, a ground sheet, a bug bivy, um, my quilt. There's a lot of other stuff going on. This is really just about the poncho tarp. Um, so let's talk about what this video is. So this is probably the number one item that I've had questions from friends and family about as I've uh, you know, thought and planned about this AT through hike attempt in 2021. Uh, you know, when you tell people, hey, I've got this garment that is my rain jacket and it's my pack cover and it's also my shelter at night. So I'm not bringing like a dedicated tent because this plus the bug net effectively does what a tent would do. Um, you get a lot of confusion and it's hard to explain in words. So I thought I would make a video. So today's video, we're going to talk about the three pitches that starting out I'm planning to use with the highest level of frequency. So that is the first one that I'll show is what I call storm mode. Um, I don't know if it has a more formal name than that, but that's what I'm choosing to call it. Um, the A-frame, which is a very classic, very common pitch. And then finally, the half pyramid, which is also very common. Um, and each of those three, the reason why I'm saying there's three different pitches for this particular tarp is because depending on what the weather and the conditions are like, I may choose to use different pitches, um, whether I'm trying to battle against wind or rain or cold temperatures. Um, the setup's going to vary a little bit. So um, like any good recipe, let's start off by talking about our ingredients. So what are we gonna be using today? Um, these are the Gossamer Gear LT5 trekking poles. Um, these are what support the ends of the shelters uh, in the various pitches. So I'll use both of them for storm mode and the A-frame, and then I'll just use one of them for the half pyramid. These are Mountain Safety Research Carbon Core Stakes. I've got nine of them. I do use all nine for storm mode. I only use eight or even sometimes six for the A-frame and the half pyramid. Um, the half pyramid really works better with, for me with eight. These are um, 1.5 millimeter lengths of guy line. They're not 1.5 millimeters long. Um, there's nine of them as well. Seven of them are one of my wingspans. Um, the other two for the ridge lines are two of my wingspans. I could probably trim these down some, and I may do that when I'm actually hiking, but I'd rather start with more than I need and trim down versus the opposite. Um, and then finally, here's the poncho tarp. So this is the Mountain Laurel Designs Pro Poncho Tarp. This is the Sil Nylon version. They also make a DCF version. Um, frankly, I'm just not confident enough in working with DCF tarps. Um, for it to be worth, I think it's $155 upcharge, something like that. Um, it would save me about four ounces if I was going to go with the DCF version. Um, but I've been using a Bora Gear Sil Nylon tarp for a few years now, and that was kind of my entryway into tarp camping. Um, and I like it a lot. So I'm confident in using Sil Nylon. I like how much it can compress. I like um, how it has a little bit of stretch to it, so you really can get a pretty tight pitch. Um, those are attributes that DCF isn't as, as well known for having. Um, so went with the Sil Nylon version. If I like it a lot, I may down the line upgrade to the DCF version to save some weight. Um, but it just wasn't worth the weight savings or the, the cost increase for me at this point in my hiking uh, journey or career, whatever you want to call it. So as a rain garment, this thing works like a normal poncho would. It's got a hood right here that you'll see is rolled up right now. That's because we're going to be talking about what it can do in tarp mode today rather than what it can do in poncho mode. I'll wear this over my backpack so it will cover both me and my backpack and offer rain protection. Um, you can tell it's pretty windy out here today, which is going to be fun for our video because that makes it significantly more challenging to pitch. Um, but it's good. It's good practice. So let me go ahead and start off by laying this thing flat out on the ground here. Um, and I'll note 
this garment does have a front and a back. Um, it also has a top and a bottom. And it's going to want to blow away from me. That will not be the first time that happens on this video. Um, I'm standing at the front and I'm looking down at the top. So the back side is a little bit narrower than the front side. Um, the reason it has a top and a bottom, there's the hood on the top. There's also an attachment point here that we're going to use when we pitch this tarp in storm mode. So if you were going to just take a regular tarp, the first pitch that I'm going to show, you wouldn't be able to pitch it exactly like this unless you had this attachment point that's kind of near the foot of the poncho tarp. So let's start off with storm mode. Um, and you can probably guess what it's used for. It is um, pretty robust in terms of weather protection, both from wind as well as from uh, precipitation. So to start off, I'm going to take two of these stakes and two of the shorter lengths of guy line, and I'm going to tie them off on the back corners. Now, I mentioned this is not meant to be an exhaustive walkthrough of, of all the ins and outs of um, how I set up my shelter. So I'm not going to talk a lot about the specific knots that I use, but I will say I'm going to link in the description to the video um, where I got this system from. It's not something that I came up with myself. This is from Andrew Skirka, um, and I've had a lot of good luck with it. So all of these links of guy line have a bowline knot tied into the end of them, and I won't be planning to untie that bowline at any point. Um, but I do fasten it to the tarp with that bowline and a lark's head, or some sort of variant of a lark's head. Um, if you're a big not enthusiast, you can correct my terminology in the comments. Um, and then use a modified trucker hitch, um, also known as a McCarthy hitch. Um, and that's very adjustable. So for this storm mode pitch, this backside is pretty much going to be fastened to the ground. Um, and this will be where my feet are when I'm actually laying in it. But I'm going to get this pretty tight. And these stakes are going to be pretty close um, to these actual corners. So same attachment in terms of the knots used. Um, again, it's a lark's head and then a McCarthy hitch. And like I said, this is pretty close to the ground um, and, and pretty decent amount of tension across the back here. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to take one of our trekking poles we're going to take one of our longer lengths of guy line and two of the shorter lengths of guy line. We're going to take three stakes. We're going to go to the front of the tarp. So now that we've got something kind of holding down our back, we're going to put our um, trekking pole here in the front side, right in the center. And so if you were going to set up um, this same poncho tarp, you could use eight stakes and eight lengths of guy line rather than nine. The reason that I use nine is because with the cork handles on these trekking poles, if you wrap the guy line around the handle, it does leave some scarring. Um, and I think over time would deteriorate the integrity of these cork handles. So I like to always have my trekking poles with the handle on the ground and then the tip to the sky. Um, so you'll see when we set up this backside, if you flip that orientation, you would need one fewer guy line and one fewer stake. So there's a grommet here on the center, and I'm going to try and get a pretty straight line from the center of the back to the center of the front. Um, and this trekking pole is adjusted to right around 108 centimeters. There's little markers so you can tell how long it is. Um, and that was the recommended length on Mountain Laurel Design's website. It's worked well for me. But like I said at the outset, maybe I didn't say this, but if not... Um, you can always lower your trekking poles in the front or the back, and that would give you additional protection from the elements. However, it reduces the amount of room that you have inside your shelter. So 108 seems like a pretty happy medium for most conditions. If it was really coming down, I may lower this to, you know, 105 or something like that. This is the same attachment here, the lark's head. However, what will be different about our ridge lines is we'll also need to tie a slip knot um, into 
our line. And again, I'm just trying to go straight back here. The reason for that is the way this McCarthy hitch works is you go back up to your lark's head and run through it, but there's not enough guy line to do that here on the ridge line. So I'm just going to tie a slip knot here, and that's what will actually, the loop formed by the slip knot is what we're actually going to use to tension this thing down. Um, I do want to have a pretty substantial amount of tension here so that my ridge line is set up for success. And while I'm up here, I'm going to go ahead and pin out these corners. Now, unlike that ridge line, these corners, especially the first one that I stake down, I don't want to have too much tension because right now this trekking pole can go left to right from the way that I'm looking at it. From the way you're looking at it, it's more front to back, but um, it can move, right? So it's, it's not, it doesn't have tension in both directions. So what I don't want to do is move that trekking pole too far off of center. So I am going to try and get this stake in the ground, but I'm not going to tension it super tight so that my trekking pole doesn't get pulled too far um, in this direction. Again, same attachment. Um, these corners, I have had the best success running 45 degrees from the corner of the tarp and then trying to follow the general slant of the tarp at the attachment point. Um, so again, this is not super tight, but I do just want to fasten it down. Now this next one, I can go tighter because I do have that other side pinned down. So there's no longer, my trekking pole can't get pulled too far in this direction because that other stake is going to stop it. So same thing here on the other corner. I'll just use this lark's head. And passing it out and it's important to remember along the way that we can adjust these things we can mess with these things a lot so if something's not exactly right that's okay and I'll also note for this video it's not going to be exactly right if I was actually setting this up and getting ready to camp underneath it I'd probably spend a little bit more time getting this stuff um, a little bit tighter but so that looks good I'm gonna move my trekking pole just a hair um, that's pretty well vertical, pretty symmetrical front to back. And I'm going to move my stake just a hair as well so that it's more perpendicular to the edge of the tarp here. So the ridge line and the sides, I like the, the guy line to pretty much be perpendicular. And like I said, on the corners, I like it to be about a 45 degree angle. Um, so now we're going to move around back to the, the back of our shelter. This other trekking pole we're going to set about 90 centimeters. Um, this, the Gossamer gear trekking poles don't have markers on the bottom segment of the, the telescoping trekking pole. So I don't know exactly how long it is, um, but the top section does have the markers. So that's why I was able to say 108 centimeters in the front. Um, don't have that same thing in the back. And I actually grabbed the wrong guy line. We're going to use one of our thicker guy lines. This is going to be our other ridge line. So this is where I talked about you couldn't set this up exactly as I'm setting it up if you just had a, a standard tarp. And the reason for that is this next attachment point is actually going to go, or this next guy line is actually going to go through this attachment point here um, that's sewn into the top of the tarp. So this is going to be what pulls up the back so that your foot box has a little bit more room and your feet aren't actually touching the bottom side of the tarp. So the way that's going to work, um, and again, this is where if I didn't mind wrapping my guy line around my handle, I could just put this trekking pole right into the grommet on the center attachment point and wrap it here. And then I wouldn't need an additional stake and guy line to then guy that out. But I like to go tips to the sky. So I'm gonna set that about a foot back from the back of the shelter. I'm just gonna get a decent amount of tension here and then wind it about three times around the top of my trekking pole. I'm just going to go straight back from there. Sorry if I'm out of frame for this part, but um, it's the same knot that we used in the front. So we have to do a slip knot, especially because here there is no lark's head for us to loop back through. Um, there's just a trekking pole end or tip. Um, and I'll just tension that down. This can withstand quite a bit of tension. It should. 
Um, again, you want your ridge line to be pretty tight. Um, and that looks pretty good to me. And then, like I said, I'm going to take one of the shorter lengths of guy line and another stake and just pin out that center attachment point here on the back. And this stake, I usually just try to put in kind of next to the trekking pole. Doesn't matter if it's on the right or the left side. Cool. So this is kind of our preliminary setup here. The first thing I can tell right away is I need to move this front stake a little bit. So it's a little bit closer to that 45 degree angle. And the way I was able to tell that is, see how this is kind of wrinkled? When this is pitched really well, you don't have a lot of wrinkles. Again, this video is just kind of for fun. So I'm not going to spend a ton of time trying to monkey with stuff. Um, hopefully keep this from being a, you know, hour plus video. Um, but could spend a little more time and get that a little tighter. The last thing I'm gonna do here is just pin down these sides. Now it's important when you're staking out your sides, you don't wanna have just a ton of tension here, um, or you don't really wanna, you do wanna have tension, but you don't wanna be like cinching them down a ton because all you're really doing if you're cinching them down a ton is you're pulling down on your ridge line. Um, so less room for you a less effective ridge line. So I just kind of get those tight, but I, I don't really like, you know, fasten them down or, or spend a ton of time trying to get them as tight as possible. So this is our last stake here that we'll put in before we pause for a second and then we convert this thing to the A-frame. And again, this is the same knot everywhere. Um, and the, the description to how you can learn these knots, um, it's not my content, but it will be linked in the description of this video. Cool. So that's all set up. I would just crawl in there. My head would go up here. My feet would go down there. I'd have the bug bivy, my quilt, my pad, all that stuff underneath here, as well as any of my other gear. Um, so this is the most protective setup. And again, if it was really, really coming down, I would probably lower this front trekking pole just a tad, um, just to get these front corners a little bit lower to the ground, because right now, gusts still can blow underneath the edge of the tarp, um, maybe get a little bit of rain splash as well, and that's obviously not ideal. So the next pitch that I'm gonna show you is gonna be the A-frame. And the A-frame is probably like the I don't think stereotypical is the right word, maybe archetypal, I'm not sure. Um, but pitching style um, that you would see with any sort of tarp, this poncho tarp included. Um, and you could definitely do this with any square tarp, any rectangular tarp. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna undo my McCarthy hitch on the sides and the back corners. I'm not gonna fully um, undo the entire knot. I'm just gonna let them kind of sit as is. So what that's gonna allow them to do is as I'm adjusting this back trekking pole, all that stuff will just loosen. If it comes undone, that's fine. We can always redo it later. Um, and then I am gonna undo completely this back guy line. Reason being for the A-frame, I'm gonna need my longer length of guy line to be running through there. So I'm just gonna toss that to the side, pull my stake out so I don't lose it. Um, and I'm gonna start undoing this stake and guy line here in the back so that I can move it over. Um, you'll notice I'm trying to keep some tension here on the, the ridge line. Um, the reason for that is that will decrease the likelihood that this thing falls apart while we're trying to convert it. If I were starting from the A-frame pitch, um, there we go. We still got our front, hopefully that'll stick together, but some of our backs come loose. Um, if I were starting here, I would probably finish one whole end and then move back to the other end, um, rather than pinning down just the corners before moving to the front. So what I just did, I adjusted my back trekking pole to be the same height as my front trekking pole. Again, this is 108 centimeters, but 
Um, it doesn't need to be 108. If we needed to lower this A-frame, it's very easy to do that just by lowering the trekking pole heights. We could also bring in the stakes on the side a little bit, but if we did that, we would have a tall but narrow shelter. Um, so you wouldn't be able to cover quite as much stuff. So again, I'm just gonna try and keep this ridge line as taut as I can, um, and then make the switch here from that top attachment point to the one on the end. Um, now we have the benefit here that we can actually put our trekking pole through that grommet, but everything else um, is, is pretty much the same. So I'm just going to fasten this down here in the back using this same trekking pole. And again, since we're on this ridge line, even though we have the longer lengths of guy line, I am going to tie a slip knot in there to actually tension this thing up as opposed to trying to run it all the way back up to our lark's head. So I am going to go for a, a pretty tight um, knot down here, more so just to keep it from falling over. I'm definitely going to have to adjust the front. So when I converted there, I lost a lot of the tension in the front. You'll see that when I go mess with the front here in a second. Um, and now I'm just going to get these back corners and try to get them, you know, around 45 degrees. Now, this is similar to when I was on the front of the tarp for the storm mode setup in that I don't want to put too much tension on this side because the trekking pole still has front to back play in it from your perspective, left to right from mine. So this can still move, um, and I don't want to get it pitched crooked. So here was where my stake was before. I'm going to move it over just a little bit, trying to get that you know, 45 degree angle or as close to it as I can, um, and can always you know, adjust those or mess with those later on. So now we're good in the back. Let's go back to the front. Like I mentioned, hopefully you can see me. This has like no tension on it now, and it's because before that thing was on the ground, it's in the same spot, but now it's vertical. So now you have a lot more wiggle room this way. So we want to get rid of that wiggle room. Um, I'm going to move my stake back just a hair, and then I'm also going to tighten that up quite a bit. And so I'm looking for that ridge line to get almost straight, not quite straight. Um, this garment is meant to have a catenary cut ridge line. So it's it's never going to be totally straight by design. Um, and then I'm just going to go and move these pegs a little bit to get them to be a little bit more taut and a little bit closer to that 45 degree angle that I like. And again, what I'm looking for is not a lot of wrinkles um, in the actual shelter. So that looks pretty good actually. I may not mess with this one. I'll go ahead and pin down the sides. Same story here, there's not a lot of benefit to over tightening your sides because all you start doing is pulling down on your ridge line. Um, I won't say all you're doing, maybe it would provide some additional structural integrity, but at the expense of pulling down your ridge line. So I'm just gonna do the back here um, and it's the same kind of story. I'm not gonna tighten it too much. Sometimes if you tighten the sides, you have to go and make some additional adjustments to your corners. So I'm seeing some wrinkles here that I'm gonna try and get rid of. And the front side looks pretty good. So you can immediately see with the wind gusting as it is, um, as far off the ground as this is, the wind is blowing it around a little bit. And like I said, I mean, I could definitely spend a few more minutes and get this to be a lot cleaner of a pitch. I'm just trying to show you kind of structurally what it looks like. Um, so I would use this, this could protect me from rain. And again, I could, um, adjust the trekking pole heights to be a little lower and that would give additional rain protection as, as well as additional wind protection, because right now gusts of wind can definitely come underneath this shelter, um, and hit me when I'm sleeping. So if it's really cold, that's obviously not ideal, but this is a more spacious pitch. Um, it doesn't matter which direction I was laying inside of it. Um, feet could be at either end. A um, little more headroom, but but could keep some some mild weather off. 
Um, so the last pitch I'm going to show you here then is the half pyramid. The half pyramid only requires one trekking pole at that same roughly 108 centimeter length. Um, but the way that it's, what it's designed for is, is it offers really solid wind protection if the wind is consistently blowing in one direction. So that's not happening here today. Um, it's pretty gusty and the direction's changing quite a bit. So this wouldn't be the ideal setup if the conditions were like they were today. Um, the temperature's nice enough. If the conditions were like they were today, I'd probably just cowboy camp. But assume or pretend with me for a moment that the wind is blowing off the water uh, consistently. This is a situation where the half pyramid would be really useful. Um, it does offer some rain protection, but you'll see not nearly as much as either the A-frame or the storm mode. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to take these trekking poles out altogether. Um, the location of the single trekking pole for this pitch is in the front um, from your orientation. So not through one of these grommets. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to fasten these back three um, attachment points to being pretty much on the ground. So I'm going to do the center one first. Um, this back center becomes really one of the primary attachment points or, or one of the, the points that's going to be bearing the most load in this pitch. Um, so I'm going to get that super tight. If there were grommets here, you wouldn't need to use the trucker hitch or McCarthy hitch. Um, but since this tarp does not have grommets on the attachment points that are not on the ridge line, um, still need to knot them. And this needs to be pretty tight um, because this backside in this pitch is going to be effectively on the ground so that those winds that were coming off the water for our illustrative example are just going to ramp up off the backside here. And I do want this to be pretty tight. Um, across the back here. So I may need to fiddle with that center one here in a second. I'm just trying to get it across the back to be pretty tightly pinned down. So let's get back and see if this is still straight back. It's not far off of being straight back. I'm going to move it just a hair. All right, let's do it like that. So the next attachment point is gonna be the center on the front um, and front from, now this is the front, whereas before it was kind of front back. Um, so we have changed orientation. And so since it has a trekking pole, it's going to need one of these longer lengths of guy line. So I'm just gonna take this length of guy line off of what was the front of the tarp I'm going to take this same stake. I'm going to go around here to the front. It doesn't matter which trekking pole um, because right now from our A-frame, they're both set right around that 108 centimeter mark. But I'm just going to take one of them with this longer length of guy line. And again, not every attachment point on this poncho tarp has a grommet. If you had one that did, you could just put your trekking pole directly into that grommet and then fasten out the attachment point. But since we don't have that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just do that same wrapping that we did before. So we're just gonna go three times, three or four times around the top there. Again, I like tips to the sky. Um, and then we're just gonna go straight back and I hope you guys are enjoying the view here. We'll just go straight back. We'll use that same slip knot that we need for our longer lengths. And we'll tie our same McCarthy hitch that we did before. I don't know that you would call this the ridge line of this pitch, um, but it is where a lot of the tension is. So I try to get that nice and tight. The next attachment points that we're gonna look at are gonna be our front two corners. So you can kind of see how this is taking shape. Um, 
of a half pyramid, right? The other half of the pyramid would come out this way. Um, so what we want is we want this, but we want it to be quite a bit tighter than it is now. So I'm gonna move my stake in and get that pretty close to being on the ground, but still try to maintain that 45 degree angle and just stake that down. You have the same left-right play as you do in other situations when you're staking out um, the guy line from your trekking pole. But fortunately, that didn't seem to pull it too far to the to the right, which I guess is probably your left. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Like I said, I'm going to bring this stake in a little bit. Um, that should be good. And try to get that 45-degree angle. Um, and then go ahead and pin that back way down. Now, you could stop right here. What you're seeing, or possibly seeing, the problem with that is that this thing can collapse down quite a bit. This thing can bub bubble up or, or um, bellow up quite a bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to stake down our sides. I'm going to take one of my stakes over here. This is the longer uh, length of guy line because it was previously attached to a trekking pole. But that doesn't matter. We can always use the longer ones in situations where we, we're using the shorter ones. The opposite of that is not true. All right, so I'm just going to pin down this side here and then do the same thing on the other side. Um, and now I'm missing my length of guy line, so I'll just grab this one. I guess I had one laying right there, but I didn't see it. Now I'll do the same thing over here and just attach the guy line again with some sort of variant of a lark's head through my bowline loop and then stake it out using that McCarthy hitch. And there you go. So there's your half pyramid. So like I said, this would be useful um, if the wind was blowing off the river. Because since this back is kind of pinned down, the wind's just going to blow right off of it. It's not as useful for rain protection because the front is so open. The other downside to this pitch, so I talked a little bit in my gear video. My bug bivy has an attachment point that pulls the no mesh off of your face. And the place where it actually attaches is on the underside of the tarp. I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's in there. And so when I'm in this half pyramid configuration, I can no longer use that attachment point for that purpose. Instead, I'd have to wear a hat when I'm sleeping so that that noceum mesh would stay up off of my face. Um, I really come to like this pitch a lot, um, particularly for wind protection. And it also just, it's a lot more you don't feel quite as boxed in. The storm mode particularly is, is pretty tight closed space. Um, the A-frame, you can adjust how high it is. So the higher it is, the less claustrophobic it is, but then also the less protection it offers. So those are the three pitches um, that I am planning to use most frequently as I start off on my AT through hike attempt. Um, like I said, this is not meant to be a detailed walkthrough video of everything about my shelter system. I just wanted to show folks um, this particular garment is just weird. So I wanted to show people how something that's your rain jacket could convert into something that's somewhat like a tent. Um, so if you've taken the time to watch this video, thank you so, so much for your support. Um, thanks for watching. Feel free to drop some comments below. I love talking about this stuff. Um, if I was out in the field, I'd probably spend a little bit more time actually pitching um, than I did today. But like I said, this is just kind of a demonstrative video. Um, so if you want to roast me for not perfectly pitching this stuff, feel free. Um, finally, like I said, in the description of the video, there's going to be a few links. First, there's going to be a link to Andrew Skirka's page where he details the knots that are used for this guideline system. Um, I think it's awesome. I highly recommend any type of tent that uses guidelines. That is a really good system. You don't have to worry about line locks, which sometimes are prone to fail. Um, I think that's gotten better in recent years, but I just got so used to these knots. 
Um, the knots are all easy to tie. The bow line is the hardest one to tie. And like I said, I'm going to leave those bow lines fixed into uh, the end of my guy lines. So I'm not going to be untying and retying those bow lines with any frequency. Um, but the other stuff, the slip knot, the, the trucker hitch, that stuff is really easy to do, even if it's really cold and you don't have as much dexterity in your hands. Um, it's very manageable. So there'll be a link to that. There'll be a link to my blog, billygoeshiking.com. You can see some of the context around this video. Um, there's a post that accompanies it. And I'll also have a link to my lighter pack page, um, which shows all the gear that I'm planning on taking, the weights of that gear, where you can buy it. Um, finally, I'm going to have a link to the product page for this Mountain Laurel Designs Pro Poncho Tarp. If you're interested in checking it out, um, I'll give a little spoiler. If you haven't read the blog post yet, I don't generally recommend people go out and buy poncho tarps. I think they're awesome pieces of gear. But unless you're really, really comfortable with tarp camping, um, these things can be difficult to use. There's definitely a learning curve associated with them. Probably the biggest thing is you have to be able to convert it from a poncho to a tarp when it's raining outside, um, which obviously has drawbacks. You, you're going to get wet pretty much no matter how you do it. There's a couple of tips and tricks that I do when I'm facing that situation. Um, for example, I can attach all of my guy lines to the poncho tarp while I'm wearing it as a poncho. You wouldn't want to do that while you're hiking because you'd trip over the guy lines. But if you're just kind of moving in a small area around camp, getting ready to set up your shelter, that's a prep preparation step that you can go ahead and do while it's in poncho mode. Um, you can also adjust the height of the trekking poles to be at the heights they're going to need to be for whatever pitch you're using that night. Um, and then you can also lay out your stakes in the general vicinity of where you think you're going to actually place them so that when you do go to pitch the tarp, there's just a lot less smaller stuff that has to be done. Um, it takes a lot less time. Hopefully you get less wet uh, in the process. So thanks again. Um, I'm getting really excited about this upcoming through hike attempt. This will likely be my last video that I post before I'm actually out on the trail. But it was important to me to film this video because... Um, since I'm using my trekking poles to actually uh, set up the shelter itself, it would become a lot more challenging to film such a video because the tripod that I'm using to film the video is not going to be something that I'm taking with me on my through hike attempt. Um, so thanks again. If you have any questions, comments, feel free to let me know. Drop me a line. It's billy at billygoeshiking.com. Thanks again.